reiterate that when Pauline said she, she covered the tip of the iceberg, I mean, there's such a wealth of data in census. She, she really only covered two data sets, the 2010 census and the American Community Survey, and there's so many other data sets and so many other tools. Um, would anybody be interested in follow-up training somewhere along the way? Mm -hmm. Okay. I may inflict a survey monkey on you later to find out what kinds of things you're interested in knowing more about. Um, CNAL's job is to democratize data, among other things, to grow local data capacity. So whether it's being able to bring Pauline back in for um, a more advanced training or more of this or, or customizing something, once we know what your needs are, we can try to address those. I also want to tell you, I've been working in community data since 1992 um, for lots of grant writing purposes, but also community assessments and so forth. The census should always, always, always be the first place you check. Now, if you find that the, the margins of error are too wide for the geographic area that you're interested in or what you need is not there, okay, move on to something else. But when, when a funder or other um, stakeholder that you're giving data to, your board of directors sees census, they're going to trust it a whole lot more than if it's some no-name, non-brand organization that puts something together, even if they use census data to get their numbers. So if y'all aren't already in the habit, please start with the census. And let me take you first to cinow.info. This is Community Information Now's homepage. Um, again, we have three uh, legs to our, our stool. Nowcast SA is webcasting this training today. Now Tech um, is actually uh, bridging the digital divide through tech training through community-based learning centers like the one you're sitting in today. And then Now Data, let's click on Now Data up at our projects. This is actually where you're going to find all of the, the data shop. Oops, I messed up my very first agenda, which is to let you know that we have an, an address, a newsletter sign up here on the home page. Um, we issue 10 to 12 newsletters a year. So if you sign up for this, you won't get uh, a flood in your inbox, but you will get updates about new data that we have and also um, interesting webcasts and so forth. So. If you want to subscribe, you can do that here on our homepage or anywhere in the, in the Now Data site that you see that, that subscription button. So here's our Data Explorer page, and I just want to give you a brief orientation. We're not going to go into nearly as much depth as Pauline did for the census tools. We have some focus areas where um, folks have asked us to do some in-depth work. Um, some of you may be familiar with Voices for Children and the annual child um, data report that they put out. We gather the data that goes into that report. We have a grant from Methodist Healthcare Ministries to um, collect mental health data, and then we do data support for the East Side Promise neighborhood, um, that implementation grant on the East Side, and the Wheatley Choice Planning Grant. Um, so you can explore those, and there's some narrative behind those if you're interested. But mostly I want to spend our time this morning on this right-hand screen, which is how you will search all of the different data that we have um, locally, which includes census that goes far beyond it. So let me just orient you to this side. You can do a keyword search, and the keyword search is going to look through what we call indicators, which is something like immunization rates among two-year-olds. Um, the resources attached to that, maps and tables and so forth, and also any descriptive text we have. So if you do a keyword search and the indicator name that you have crop up doesn't have the word in it that you found, uh, that you searched for, it doesn't mean the keyword search is broken, it just means it's hidden somewhere down in the description or the resource name. You can browse everything we have if you have eight hours of your life that you never want to get back. Um, you can go by topic, uh, and if you click on one of these topics, you'll see a list of subtopics. I'll show you that in a minute. If you're only interested in one county, um, then you can look at everything we've got for um, the county, within the county of interest, and then we have some special tools and a help screen. Let me first go to um, Browse Health and Safety. And we're going to click Show More Options. That's critical. All the good stuff doesn't show up until you click Show More Options. 
Let's go to behaviors and risks, all the things that are upstream of um, good or poor health status. And let's say, I was expecting some folks from Comal today, but they didn't show up. So let's use bear instead of Comal. And click the bear checkbox. And let's say that you need to know stuff below the city or county level. So let's just grab some checkboxes. We'll say census tract, um, city council district, neighborhood, zip code. And these are all OR searches. So you're not looking for everything that's by census tract and city council district. It'll be city census tract or city council district. And then you can limit by the format. We're not going to do that right now, but if you were only interested in maps or only interested in tables that you could download and manipulate the data yourself, you could restrict it that way. Is everybody caught up so far? Okay, and we're going to hit the magic blue button, search. Now this, uh, this gray text up here will tell you what you just searched for. So we're exploring health and safety, looking just in the subtopic of behaviors and risks, just for Bear County, and just for these kinds of sub-county data. That's your shopping cart. That's my shopping cart. Um, we found 10 indicators. The way that our data are organized, again, is you have your indicator and then you have what we call resources, a map, a table, a report. Um, a link externally uh, attached and there may be one resource for an indicator there may be 27 resources for an indicator let's just click on walkability not everything that we do is crunching data from someplace like the Census Bureau in some cases people have done a very good job of analyzing data and visualizing it and in that case we don't want to reinvent that wheel so we do what we call curating if you imagine a museum exhibit somebody pulls together the paintings that should go into that museum exhibit and we vet all these different resources that are out there and say this is a quality one, it's accurate, it's of interest, it's local, we'll add it to our collection. So we're curating other stuff as well as generating our own. So there's a lot of stuff here because we provide um, data support to Eastside Promise, we've got the walk score for every different neighborhood within Eastside Promise. But let's look at San Antonio, walk score for San Antonio. It's low, I have to be low. It's too steep to drive here. It is. So here's um, a thematic map, just as you were looking at earlier, where um, red is worse and green is better and yellow is in between. You can see you're still within our frame and you can click back to indicator. You haven't gotten lost. Um, you can navigate within the, the walk score site um, without leaving our website. You can see here downtown is very walkable, yeah. um, but especially once you get out to the suburban oh, so areas. You see, oh, you can see that. All right, not so much, okay? So some of these sites will have the raw data for you, and I know that I am always wanting the raw data. I want the map, but I also want the raw data. So we can't guarantee that everything will always be available for the stuff that we link to, but we try to get you the raw data every chance that we get. So San Antonio is the 40th most walkable city in the U.S. But like everything else, it really depends on where in San Antonio you are, right? Okay, so let's click back to indicator. That wasn't a surprise. <laughs> that was a confirmation for you. So now from here, um, again, if you're just like, you can't sleep, um, you can just browse through other indicators that are related, or you can go back to um, home to get started again. But let me just let you know here that we've tried to add, we have the years that the data are for. We have this, the topics that it is filed in. Um, and then we have some notes where we try to give you some user cautions um, or tell you something about where the data came from, help you interpret how to uh, use it. I like the word user cautions. User cautions. We need to add user encouragement. <laughs> Look, you found it! User encouragement. I like that. User caution. User encouragement. Like it. Alright, so I'm just going to use the back button 
actually I'm going to go back all the way, um, back to the exploring screen. Um, now that I've shown you one indicator, I just want to make sure that it's clear that each one of these bold titles is a different indicator, and each one has a different number of resources in it. It's a little bit of a hodgepodge. We cover 12 counties in every different issue area, so we have a whole oh lot more God. on births than we do on elevated blood lead. Okay, So you, it may be a little bit hit and miss. Um, but again, you will have to, none, nothing here is clickable. And if you click this view, again, you're going to see what's in there so you don't waste your time um, if, if the walkability thing that you need is not actually in walkability. But you have to click on the indicator title in order to drill down to the good stuff. Here's one I like that we just found. Housing plus transportation affordability index. For those of you who are dealing with poverty, um, you know, the rule of thumb that, that housing should be no more than 30% of your income. But because transportation is so critical in San Antonio, we're a little bit behind the times on mass transit, although we're getting a whole lot better and so many of our neighborhoods are not walkable. And, you know, you frequently just have to have a car or you're on bus transfers multiple, multiple times each trip. So the housing plus transportation index um, loads in um, transportation to the, the very basic cost of, of living and for neighborhood affordability. All right, let's go back to home. I want to show you some of the stuff that we have um, related to the census data that Pauline has already showed you. Again, we curate other people's stuff, and sometimes we do. We are able to make it easier for you to get to it. So I hope that you'll all become experts in American Fact Finder. But let's say that you just got to have that population figure for San Antonio, and you can't remember it off the top of your head, and you don't want to go look through Quick Facts. How fast can you get it? Um, or you need data aggregated to a service area, um, which is the life that I used to live, that you've got kind of a random collection of census tracts, and you have to aggregate um, a number, um, like, like race ethnicity breakdowns for your service area, and you have to do that by adding up census tracts. So I did a keyword search for census, and it found everything that has census in the title of either the indicator or one of the resources underneath it. So here you can see census is not in this title, but it is in the resource titles. So there's a reason those come up. I'm going to show you census 2010, census tract, demographic, and housing profiles. Now the Census Bureau, this time with the new American Fact Finder, which has been by some of my fellow data geeks described as a the Swiss Army knife to the, to the buck knife that was the old American fact finder. It's a whole lot more complicated, but it's a whole lot more robust. It's got a lot more, a lot more tools in it. One of the new tools is, is something called a bookmark. Um, used to be you couldn't bookmark results to send to people. Um, you, it would revert to the query screen. That's not true anymore, so let me connect to there. And here you can see it's taken you straight to table DP1 that you guys looked at earlier for Bear County. Oh, good. Yeah. And the census tracts are all here in this pull down menu. If you only need one census tract, let's go back to 1305, which does happen to be in the East Side Promise neighborhood, um, you can see it there. Now, um, on the indicator description, again, user, user notes and encouragement cautions and encouragement. We've put text that says you can use the pull down menu to view each different census tract and downloading to CSV format will generate a file that contains all of the census tracts. Downloading to Excel or other presentation ready format will only save the one that you're viewing, the one that's okay. selected. So right here, if I say download and go to Excel, It's going to build my file. I'm just going to open it rather than save it. And you can see that it has preserved the indents and everything that make the data intelligible, intelligible to you. It looks exactly like it did on the screen. But it's only 1305, right? So we need to go back here 
and say download because let's imagine that I need all the south side census tracts for my service area so I've got to eliminate all the ones in all of the other areas of the county I'm going to say data and annotations in a single file just like this is here I'm going to wait incredibly patiently and be grateful for all of the things that are technologically possible I believe in gratitude. While that's doing that, um, let me just back up here and show you that we have, let's say that I want to search census demographic. Oops. So we've got the demographic and housing profiles for the congressional district, for the census tract, and for the county. So those are the shortcuts that we have available for you through these, um, these deep links. So here, it's finished. Yay. It never takes that long. I'm just not, a, I'm not that patient. Now here's the problem with this setup. You can see here are all the census tracts that you need, right? You can just select out or delete the ones that, that you don't want. However, we've lost the pretty indents. Um, so you'll have to, um, the way that I do it, honestly, is to get rid of the ones that I don't like and copy it, paste it, transposed, so that these things are all on the left side and my census tracts are columns. This is the kind of thing we could cover in a later training if you wanted to do that. But I wanted to let you know how you can get all of the census tracts of interest in Bear County or just some of them, just one of them. Does that make sense to folks? Now you can navigate here back to search and change um, if you want something else in Bear County. Let's say that you didn't want the uh, demographic and housing profile. You needed something from American Community Survey, but you still wanted all the census tracts. You can, pres you can, it's a little shortcut. You've already got the right geographies here in this list. So what else do I have for you? Oh, weave. Here's a fun part. Weave. Weave. What is weave? Weave is the web-enabled analysis and visualization environment, which I highly recommend you not say at a party. People don't think you're very cool. I can tell you from experience. Um, Weave is an, an open source data visualization tool that we started using that does maps and a whole lot more. Um, let me do a keyword search for immunization. I could also find Weave, um, wow I don't have a show other, okay good to know. Usability testing on the fly. Um, each of these resources that's a Weave visualization is labeled that way if you go want to go and find them. Um, I'm going to show you percent of children 19 to 35 months old with their 431331 series. It does take a minute and let me let you know this works on um, any PC that has, it has to have Flash and JavaScript so it won't work on your iPhone. It will work on your Android. It will or will not? Will. We'll oh, work wow. on Android. It won't Ooh. work because iPhone doesn't like Flash. Yeah, this is so here's a thematic map. One nice thing about these visualizations is everything's tied together. So if I yeah. highlight zip code 78202 over here, you, can you see that it's highlighting it in the histogram in the middle? Yeah. Amazing. And it's what off the screen. The subject? This is childhood immunization rates, two-year-old oh, immunization okay. rates. Beautiful. This is, very um, this is what we yes. And this is what we call it. This is by zip code. This okay. is our time slider. This is my favorite thing. Watch this. This is 2004 data, and it's going to take you through change over time. Sorry, I asked a question earlier about changing health. Right. This is this is amazing. Oh wow. And it tells you, I don't know if you can see in the data table, it says 2008, 2009, 
2010. I like this map because it actually shows things getting better. We go back to 2004, yes. you see how the histogram is pushed to the left. Mm -hmm. And over the years, it starts to move a little bit to the right until we hit the recession in 2009. Wow. So, again, because we do data support for Eastside Promise, um, we can select the subset <coughs> of My time slider is cut. I'm going to pause it for a minute. So I've stripped away everything except the two zip codes that make up the East Side Promise neighborhood. Um, it's beyond what we're going to do today, but you can create under subsets, selections and subsets. You can create your own if you want to um, get information just for a handful of census tracts or zip codes that are on the map. But so I can play the change in time. Um, just for these two zip codes, just the same way. And then I can go back to show all records. Under subsets, show all records. All right. Now let's say that you wanted to, um, you wanted to get 2010 only. You want the most recent thing there was. So you can manually move your time slider over to 2010. Um, and let's imagine that you wanted everything on this screen. If you right click on the gray bar, you can print export application image and it will spit out for you the entire screen that you're looking at. Nice. And then you say save as image, okay? Or you can print it from there, but I think saving as image works a little bit better. Save if you it, only save it as image and then you print it, um, yes. Okay. Because yeah, it that, seems yeah. to give you more control over how it looks when it's printed. Okay. I wish this thing would stop playing. <laughs> I want the time slider to stop sliding. Let's say you only wanted the map. You can just say instead of application image, which gives you everything, just the map. Now the problem is you can, just like you can um, get something without a source, which is a terrible thing to do, you can get a map without a legend. So if you do this, be sure to grab your legend too. And that way the colors and the breaks are cut off. Also, if you want this data yourself and you need a subset of the zip codes, you can click export data um, and save it in CSV to your desktop. And let me show you another Wii visualization really quick. Um, juvenile probation, child use, neglect, and family violence. In addition to the maps and the bar charts, um, we have scatter plots, which I love. How many of you have seen scatter plots before? Do you know what you're looking at? About half. Okay. So the deal is here with a scatter plot. Here's 78203. So can you see? I had a laser pointer and I don't. Can you see the highlighted circle in the first map? Um, thank you. Here. Do you see this highlighted circle? Mm -hmm. And do you see these actual numbers? So what the scatter plot do is doing is taking the rate of family violence, which is 144.3, and plotting it against the rate of juvenile probation referrals, which is 464.3. So there is where 464.3 meets 144.3. That's how scatter plots work. The thing that's cool about them is if you see a tight association between two variables, in other words, a zip code where, um, let me say it this way, zip codes that experience high rates of family violence almost always experience high rates of juvenile probation referrals you're going to see a very tight diagonal line up here because they always track together. If there were no association, these dots would be spread out all over the screen. So 
This is actually, people run a regression line here when they get into more sophisticated data analysis, but this is a quick way of visualizing whether there's a relationship or not. Um, the size of the dot is the number of kids. Um, is that the number of kids? No, this, is the num this particular one is the number of population. So you can see that even though this orange dot is not the worst zip code, for either one, it doesn't have the highest rate of juvenile probation deferral and it doesn't have the highest rate of family violence. It's got the most people. So if you're planning where to put services, you might want to put them where there's a whole lot of people needing services, not necessarily where there's few people with the greatest concentration of problems. I mean, that's something that that's would be organizational policy. So you can see here, this is darn near where we are now. Are we in 7207 right now? I think we are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 37. 37. Oh, okay, so we're right next door, probably. But here's 78207. You can see that even though it's not got the worst rates of either one, it's got a huge population worth paying attention to. So here is a scatter plot of family violence against abuse neglect. So you can see, again, there's a very close association. Where you see one, you're going to see the other. That makes sense. And here's the data table again. Um, it's cut off, but you can export this data. Um, some things are missing. We don't have data for it, especially family violence. You'll just see a blank there. We don't have the data, and the dot will appear off the scatter plot. Here's where we have family violence, but we don't have juvenile probation, for example. Does this make sense to folks? And again, you can take the whole screen or just the scatter plot. All right, that is Weave. Um, eventually, we will have support for you to put your own data in Weave um, as a quick way to map it. Like the Census Bureau has given you great support to map census data. I can't imagine why you'd use anything else. But if there's data that comes from multiple sources or something besides census, you could use Weave to do your own. Let me show you one more thing that's coming up. I like to indicate home. If you click on custom cross tabs, you'll see the custom cross tab tool is no longer available. That's the big news. It's good news. The custom cross tab tool was a little bit hinky, and we wanted something better. Yeah, what? Hinky, yeah. hinky. Yes, that's the thing. Hinky. Useless. Totally useless. Okay. Community View is not going to be useless. And Community View is going to be a public access um, web tool that's going to pull together what I call person-based data, administrative data like patient data, student data, um, client data. In the aggregate, you'll never see person-level data. Pulling that together with place-based data like census tract. So then maybe you would know, be able to examine the neighborhood characteristics of the people that you serve, right? Um, we know that neighborhood matters a lot. Growing up in, in kind of the, the stew of poverty matters a whole lot. So we'll be able to show you um, births and deaths, the demographic and housing profiles down to, I actually think we'll be able to get down to block group. Hospital discharges, so if you wanted to look at asthma, hospitalization rates for, um, or ER, let's say ER admissions for asthma, against pollutant exposure um, for respiratory risk pollutants, you'd be able to do that. If you wanted to see um, kinder readiness against um, elevated blood lead level, okay? So you'll be able to grab data for a demographic group, like if you only cared about teenage Hispanic females, you could do that. Or if you only cared about zip code 78207 you'll be able to pull all that down. We expect that to come online in mid-December. So again, if you want to stay updated, join our mailing list and you'll know when that's coming. Um, and there's a narrative description here if you want to read more about Community View. Do you have questions on our site? We've got a lot of stuff up here and yet I know that whatever you go looking for will not be there because that's the way it works. Yeah, who do you contact? Because what it is, it is a, there is a learning curve. Yes. But I just want to say that the community view tool is uh, designed in San Antonio. And it's, it's a U.S. Department of Ed is looking at this. It's probably one of the key reasons we got the Prompt Standard Grant. 
do this. But everything that community information has available, whether it's for voices or for promise or whatever, they make it available to the public, the whole community. The whole purpose is to give every tool that they make and create, make it available for all of us. Mm -hmm. yeah. And for you know, it's free. So two, two things about how to um, give us feedback. Um, we, we have what I call the nine second survey. There are three mandatory questions and several other optional questions about usability of this site. So if you have a chance to play with it and you have good or bad things to say, please take our usability survey. You can go here to contact us and here is our um, email address. Um, and you also have, I believe, Stephanie's email address from, and maybe Celia's as well, um, from coordinating registration for this. So we're happy to help you however we can. Um, we would prefer to figure out what people's needs are and address them in trainings like this to the extent that we can rather than one-on-one. -on -one.